Thank you so much for having me today and really uh, last minute and my name is Christina Tobin. I'm the founder of the Free and Equal Elections Foundation which is an organization that's here to create truly open and transparent elections throughout the United States and hopefully the world and I've been an advocate for reforming the electoral system since I was 17 years of age when I saw my father, who ran for governor as a third-party candidate in Illinois, um, wrongfully knocked off the ballot. And I learned at a young age in high school, <laughs> really your age, that the system's flawed. Um, in Illinois, you have to get five times as many signatures just to get on the ballot, 25,000 signatures from registered voters versus only 5,000 for Democrats and Republicans. And since then, I've spent my entire life not only helping candidates, honest, accountable candidates from independent Democrats, Republicans, Green Party, Libertarians, Independents, get on the ballot and helping get over a million signatures. Um, but I have also uh, started Free and Equal Elections in 2008. In the last couple of years, I've been doing this full time and I plan on doing it full time for the rest of my life. And in 2008, we held what was the first alternative debate to the Commission on Presidential Debates in Washington, D.C., uh, alternative that is aired on C-SPAN Live nationally. And what I learned was a lot. Are any of you familiar with the Commission on Presidential Debates? The Commission on Presidential Debates, every presidential election, you'll see on stage a Democrat and Republican running for president that are debating each other, and that's hosted by the Commission on Presidential Debates, which is run by the former chair of the Democratic and Republican parties. Back in the late 80s, the League of Women Voters, uh, they have them throughout the U.S., they actually were kicked out of the Commission on Presidential Debates because it was taken over by the party system, the Democratic and Republican party leaders, and the League of Women Voters put out a statement saying, the Commission on Presidential Debates has perpetuated a fraud on the American voters. This is not just. What I've learned um, is that all the problems we have from what has brought me here today is the amazing and powerful, peaceful protests that have been here at this high school the week before last week, really coming out and taking a stand of keeping the truth in our history, which is very important, in our curriculums. And every problem we have from that to should we have GMO lab labeling, there's other issues like the National Defense Authorization Act, I'm sure your teacher <laughs> has taught you, to the Patriot Act, to the military industrial complex, to the prison system and war, what's going on in Syria. It's very, very um, serious stuff. But here at Free and Equal Elections, we're here to help fix the problem. And what I've found as an advocate um, working to help bring about open and transparent elections throughout the U.S. is that we need to inspire a movement for accountable candidates to run for office. And the key in doing that is the youth. According to the polls, Gallup, Rasmussen, and so on, the 18 to 28 year olds and I know you're freshmen, but you'll be 18 before you know it. And Sarah, of course, being a junior, is right there. The 18 to 28 year olds are the game changers, according to the polls. The mainstream media, the system, reality shows, all these things brainwash us into thinking maybe we can't fix things, or a lot of Americans maybe are a bit more apathetic uh, than they would be if they were hearing more of the truth through honest media which is something we support at Free and Equal Elections. And I really commend to Sarah and all of the leaders here at this high school, inspiring, I feel, so many more high schools at will through the movement uh, of students rising and standing up peacefully, positively, for what is right. And I do welcome Sarah and everybody here um, to join us next week as we're going to be hosting 
a governor's debate an open one, um, which ties into what I said before, the Commission on Presidential Debates. That's an issue statewide and throughout the U.S. where alternative candidates, third parties, and dependents are not being included into the debates. There's been 11, 12, 13, I don't know, or more governor debates here in Colorado, of which only Governor Hickenlooper and the Republican, the Governor Democrat, and the Governor Bob Beaupre, or excuse me, the Republican Bob Beaupre, have been the only ones that have been invited to these debates. But there are other candidates on the ballot. There's the Green Party, Harry Hempe, there's Matthew Hess with the Libertarian Party, there's Mike Donovan, an independent who's currently the mayor of Glendale, Colorado, and he's not even included into the debates. They've been um, blocked out, and that's not right and that's not just because we the people, all ages, all ages, sorry, all ages, all races, all genders deserve to hear from these accountable candidates. So how many of you heard, have heard of Public Enemy, the band? Maybe? Maybe juniors more? Seniors? So they're iconic from the 80s and 90s. Uh, Chuck D, Flavor Flay, Professor Giff of Public Enemy. Um, last year they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So they actually sang the song Fight the Power, you know, really cool, upbeat, hip-hop music, and all tied into KRS-One, to Ice Cube, to Mortal Technique, different musicians in the hip hop industry. Um, Mortal, or sorry, Professor Griff is actually going to be a moderator of this debate next Wednesday, which will be held at Infinity Park in Glendale, co hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. And we have so many amazing sponsors. Have you heard of Rock the Vote? Maybe? Rock the Vote? You will. If you haven't, <laughs> we'll be helping with that. Um, to amazing organizations and co companies like Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps and just a lot of, um, of that. So the key, and I don't have my cell phone on me, but the cell phones that you may have and the future you will have is really our freedom. Our freedom of information to learn what is going on in the world. And as you become sophomores, juniors, seniors, you'll become more exposed to honest media out there, whether it's the um, uh, the Amber Lyons and the Ben Swans and Abby Martins, all these different media people that you are not hearing, you're hearing more of CBS and Fox, and the money behind that media maybe isn't so pure, but there are still good reporters sometimes with those entities. So I guess really to get to the <coughs> final part of the speech, how are we going to take back our government? There's more of us than there are of them. I've learned in the last 15 years of my life Respectfully so, the party system doesn't work. Our founding fathers had no mentions of the parties. The two-party system has blocked everyone out. They've really become one party. The money in politics is a problem. The system intentionally divides us using tools like I mentioned, the Commission on Presidential Debates, again, right, for per perpetuating a fraud. That's a fraud on American voters, you soon to be voters, I hope, when you turn 18. And so what we're going to do is create a movement outside of the two-party system of independent individual candidates to rise, accountable candidates. Even third parties I've seen as they become larger, they inevitably become infiltrated at the national level. But at our movement, we're going to see each candidate as an individual. That cell phone, again, it's your freedom. That is going to be your freedom. So we're going to not only be holding a debate at Infinity Park next Wednesday, which I welcome all of you to come, no charge. We're giving 100 free tickets out. And I'm sure Sarah will be putting maybe even more than 100, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it seats 500, very exclusive. But to come and listen to questions like local curriculum. Should we be removing history from the curriculums? Should we be labeling GMOs? The prison system, should we have? You know, individuals in prison. I know Colorado, as we know, very common, the legalization of marijuana is pretty, like, is, I think Colorado is taking a stand much faster. I think it's really the state that the world's going to listen to over California now. The state has just become a leader and attracts a lot of amazing people. We're working with Morton, our supporter here, and Bruce here, helping record and so on. So we're staying here in Colorado for an equal elections. After the debate, which we've already, um, hopefully, will be aired, likely on C-SPAN, the Associated Press has been in touch, Clear Channel, next Wednesday, and we're going to take it to the next level. 
we're going to hold a United We Stand festival next summer. And I can talk a little bit more later on and keep in touch with Sarah, bringing together people, whether it's from the Larry Kings to the Dennis Kuciniches and, and so on, to musicians like founders of Wu-Tang Clan we've worked with, um, just amazing artists, Immortal T Technique, and the list goes on and on. We're going to inspire a movement for all of you when you turn 18, is what I hope, to vote, to get registered. Go on rockthevote.com, go on headcount.com, go on our website, freeandequal.org. Get engaged in the voting process because your future right now is not looking too good with what's going on in the world, but we can change that because there's more of us than there are of them. And the system wants us to give up, but I always, I had this one girl, she was a high school student, come up to me one day after I spoke at a college freshman, actually, at Pepperdine University. She said, Christina, why are you doing what you're doing? She's like, there's no way that we're going to be able to, to fix this. And I looked at her and I said, then why are you here? Why are you here at this movement, this liberty speaking to fix things? Because the moment you give up, you become a part of the problem. And that's what the system wants. They want us to go home and watch our reality shows. You know, they want us to go home and, and uh, do things that just maybe don't make us think as much as we should. And I want to commend your teacher for having me here today. He sets himself apart from most, a lot of teachers in the U.S. and I think is going to inspire a lot more to be like him for having me here today to be able to speak with you. Because this is really, truly a historic moment. It's the first time I've ever spoken in front of a high school. I've spoken in front of thousands of media outlets, national, local, and all. But this is probably one of my favorite experiences of all time right now, to be able to engage and connect with you. And it makes me very happy to do so. So I think I got all the points. If I missed anything, uh, Morton, Bruce. Can I bring something up? Sure. Can I ask permission for the kids in the schools to come on the cell phones? Or is that not allowed? Uh, we usually don't. Why? You don't. No. Okay. To, to what end? To the end of have the, having them uh, Google Commission on Presidential Debates. Oh. And to actually view what that looks like. Okay. Uh, presidential uh, Commission on Presidential Debates, Wikipedia. Okay. And I think the learning experience, I'm a, a very strong believer in the visual learning experience. Sure. And if they see it on their cell phone, I believe we will be teaching your students a tremendous amount because without that ownership, basically, they'll walk out of the room and they I don't feel they will, will have learned anything. Sure, so if you guys got the smartphones, take them out, let's wiki this and see what, and we're looking for a definition of... Okay, what they need to do... You have permission to use your cell phones yeah. in the classroom. <laughs> okay, so what they need to do... I wish we had a... That's a, 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 you can do that, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Martin. Wonderful. So, and I can, I mean, if it if it's just about looking it up and having them read it, I can certainly just oh, great. that on. The, yeah. There you go. There you go. And it's also good to bookmark it on your phones and maybe share it. With we're gonna too. we're gonna accomplish a lot in the next ten minutes. Okay. So it's the, it's what again? <coughs> Commission on Presidential Debates, Wik Wikipedia. And then I'll be happy to take questions afterwards. So if you have any questions, just think about it at a time. So. Now, what we're going to do is scroll down to the portion on the League of Women Voters, right. which would be the history. The history right there. Yeah. Okay. Now, right here. Let's see. So it says the League of Women Voters. They moderated all these debates from 76 to 84, but in 88, uh, they withdrew from the Commission on Presidential Debates, stating the demands of the two campaign organizations would perpetuate a fraud on the American voters. The party system has been perpetuating a fraud 
on soon to be you, the voters at 18 years of age. Oh, can I say something real quick? Please, go ahead. Students, think about that for a moment. What do, what do you think when Christina is showing you this, truly? What are your, do any of the students want to, uh, Sarah, you want to make a statement? <coughs> You're a junior. I'm a junior. I'm yeah. going to vote for you there. <coughs> um, things like this. I already know my political views. Then again, I'm like, how much, like two years older than most of you guys. Maybe three. But I'm also a student, right? I have my voice. I protested out there from 940 until 2. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. And as she said, independents don't have the really right, I guess. They don't really get to talk in these debates. Certain things I view very democratically. Certain things I view very Republican. You guys know what an independent right is. Mm -hmm. Or like in the middle. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's like certain things like gun control. I'm very Republican about that because I hunt. But then again, with like uh, abortion, I think you have the right to choose in certain cases. So it's a 50-50 chance. I don't want to be like kind of forced into this or forced into this. We talked about the ideal candidate. Like if you're extremely Republican all throughout the board, yeah, you can vote for a Republican. Or same with just Democrats. Most of us have views from both sides. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. with yeah. environmental laws, some of you guys would be more Republican or more Democratic. You're not just Republican because there's certain views that you might have on the other side. No one, I don't think any of you guys are just one. I mean, even if your parents are just one, they might still have views on the other side. My mom taught me from a very young age to be independent because it allows me to have the freedom to have both sides. So I want a candidate that's also independent. And I don't really get that chance. And I am going to be voting <coughs> when I turn 18. Next year. Yay. <laughs> we should clap for Sarah. Well done. And Sarah, I second that I'm an independent. I believe the biggest major majority is the individual. And again, I foresee every candidate, everyone that runs for office as an individual. So that power, that tool at Free and Equal Elections will be launching an election assistant later this year and for forever the future, listing every single candidate running for office, whether they're Democrat, Republican, third party, independents. And you're gonna be able to see who they are. You're gonna see online debates, not only the debate next Wednesday, most of you may have know, may know, or some of you may have known of our debates in 2012. There was a debate moderated by broadcast legend Larry King and myself. And that was pretty cool. It was top 10 trending on Twitter. National, mostly international media covered that. And that was just, you know, I'm just a gal that wants to help save our country. And it's going to be all of you right here that are going to help to achieve and make that happen. And so finally, the other section on the commission, if we scroll up a little bit, Morton, sure. and then we'll wrap up on that, is up here. Look at this. Right here, the organization, the CPD, Commission on Presidential Debates, is a nonprofit controlled by the Democratic and Republican parties, has run each corporation controlled, uh, that is, by the Democratic and Republican parties, uh, has run, uh, has each of the, it's hard to read up close, um, has run each of the presidential debates since 1988. The commission is headed by Frank Farenkopf, the former head of the Republican National Committee, and former White House Press Secretary Michael D. McCurry, who's a Democrat. If you look down here at the board of directors, as you get from more familiar with these names, most of them are tied to the CIA. That's not good. <laughs> and so, this is the biggest tool that the system uses. Um, I worked in, in 2008 for an independent presidential candidate just getting him on the ballot. Remember those ballot signature drives to get on the ballot? Helping to coordinate over half a million signatures for independent Ralph Nader. I would have done it for Dr. Ron Paul. Um, he said he would have run in 2008, but the signature requirements were too costly, too much to get on the ballot. and so. Tools like ballot access signatures to the Commission on Presidential Debates to mainstream media that has shut out these three other candidates running for governor. In Colorado, one, that's the mayor of Glendale, Mike Donovan is an independent, and of course is Harry Hempy of the Green and Matthew Hess of the Libertarian. They're not being included into the debates. 
And the, the things they're talking about probably need to be more so like what I addressed before, from the NDAA to uh, war to local issues like the GMO, fluoride, all these sort of things that we wrote, the local curriculums, how the curriculums should be in history. I commend you guys here and the protests have really drawn me here. I think you're going to inspire many more high schools to do the same and Free and Equal Elections is very, very eager uh, to do that and we do hope that Sarah or someone on behalf could ask a question at our debate next totally Wednesday. Great, you know, recognizing the protests and all of that and I think it's going to be so inspirational. Again, I welcome um, all of you to come be a part of this historic event uh, next Wednesday. Mo Morton, was there anything else? Yeah, one other thing. Let me ask, how many of you put that on your cell phone? Or your iPad? Whatever. How many? Raise your hand. OK, so you have it on your cell phone. And you see this, the screen, and you see it on your cell phone. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you have any plans? What do you plan to do with it? Any ideas? I can give you some ideas. Share it with your parents. Share it with your friends. And you can tell them, this is right, right there on, on the internet, on your cell phone, on Wikipedia, telling you the truth. Something no one in this room knew about. Am I right? Is there anyone in this room that knew about this? Sarah. He's a junior. <laughs> so here is information that's going to be passed along on October 8th at the debate in Glendale. And as Christina mentioned, you're welcome to uh, show up, bring your friends, the first hundred <coughs> students to show up with an ID, get in free. Or just say you're from here. <laughs> so do you guys have some questions yeah, for them? Yeah, please. <coughs> questions. What time is it It's next Wednesday at 7 p.m. So we're going to have a speaker beforehand, uh, 2012 presidential candidate Dr. Jill Stein of the Green Party. She's going to be speaking prior to the debate um, about her experience in wanting to open the debates not only in Colorado but nationwide. Um, she was actually in 2012 arrested for just trying to attend a debate um, that she was not invited to participate in. And we're also going to have a video from the 2012 Libertarian candidate, Governor Gary Johnson. He's the former governor of New Mexico. Um, he's vetoed more bills than all governors combined throughout the United States. So he'll be submitting a video. And we will also have a surprise video from a renowned uh, political figure who has uh, <laughs> no longer with the Democratic Party. Um, he's good friends with Dr. Ron Paul. Um, so we'll be announcing that in the near future. But um, so it'll be at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and we may have some music after the debate. So I think it's pretty cool to have, you know, some music, a little bit of <coughs> rap, jazz type uh, band that's really influential. I'm looking at a few uh, here in Colorado to just wrap up the debate and make it fun because. One thing a gentleman by doc, Dr. Ron Paul once said, if you ever want to bring about a revolutionary, and I always like to drop the R, an evolutionary change, two things would need to be involved, he said, the youth and music. So I hope you guys can make it, because it'll be an opening speech, question by Sarah, you're going to be able to see her. Or maybe uh, Jacob Spiegler. He's yeah. actually one of the people that really set it up, like Facebook page, and if you guys, John Smith, Go up together. Yeah. John Smith is actually four students. Yeah. Jacob Spiegler is one of them. Great. Go so. up together. You can ask. You can ask part of it. It's awesome. Together, more the merrier. And then we're going to wrap it up with uh, one band. Of course, next summer we'll have a whole fest at Infinity Park <coughs> to inspire this movement. But I hope that answers your question. Thank you. So, 7 p.m. So, other questions, you guys? One over here. Um, oh. In your opinion, what is the perfect candidate? Perfect candidate. Candidate. An accountable candidate. An accountable candidate that says what he believes in and sticks with it. My role, I have my personal opinions, but as the founder of Free and Equal, my role is to help educate everybody. So if there's a candidate that believes in one thing, if they believe that there should be money in politics and a lot of it, there's one that doesn't, that believes there should be no money in politics. That's up to you to decide as a soon-to-be voter 
which candidate best represents what you want in your future. If a candidate is for GMO labeling, um, I think Proposition 105 here, uh, GMO labeling here in Colorado, do you want that? Do you want your food to be labeled organic? I don't know, do you want your food? Do you know about that or not? You know, those sort of topics uh, to the history. Do you want your um, curriculum, do you want the history to be removed from your curriculum? Yes or no? No. No, I didn't hear any objection. I get a speech about that. Yeah, and, and let's do that, and I want to get your question too, but I think, you know, an accountable candidate, because right now the candidates in office, most of the Democrats and Republicans are controlled by money, and it's not good money, and it's money that feeds into what has created needless chaos throughout the world what's happened in Gaza, Syria, that is all very closely connected to us. And things could change here maybe in a not a positive way, but I don't think so because we have the internet and social media to be able to take the power back, our freedom. So we've got to rise peacefully, the more of the Sarahs and all the groups and all of you that were there, I know some of you were, I hope more in the future, that is just the key and, and I hope and I feel that Green Equal can help offer that solution. So. Thanks, that's a great question. And I think, well, did you have a question? Then Sarah could speak about the, would love to, the curriculum. I was wondering, like, what do you think of how everything is, like, like how everything is, the votes and whatnot? I don't know how to explain it. You mean, like, the voting fraud? Yeah. Like, between the fraud and the American Voters the Commission, that's yeah. probably the most important question. Like that is all our, but that is a great question because I'm a little concerned about the mail-in ballots here in Colorado. Um, as you know, uh, everybody typically votes around the 15th or 18th of the month. The system doesn't even know really how they're gonna be counted. It's really like, we're in year 2014. We should know how to count ballots. We should allow people to be able to vote right before the election, because a lot of things happen days before the election. So I'm not sure about that, but as far as voter fraud, huge issue. Um, from electoral college to gerrymandering to closed so source software, all these topics. Should we have proportional representation? Should we have instant runoff voting? So free and equal elections, we plan on hosting a discussion, a small conference at Infinity Park on Saturday, November 15th, uh, bringing in some prominent people in Colorado that deal with election laws and whatnot to listen to scholars and experts throughout the U.S. and Colorado to address the need to get rid of electoral fraud. Because that is another tool the system has used. They've made it feel like our vote doesn't count. And to be honest, I don't hold it against anyone who hasn't voted in the past because it is a corrupt system, unfortunately. However, I will hold it against those who don't vote in the future because we can clean that up. And the first way we're gonna do that, back to his question, is electing those accountable candidates into office. How are we gonna do that? You vote. You see the ballot counts. You count with them. Make sure they're counted right. Commission on come to the debates, get informed. Use that freedom that we have, the last bit of it in those handheld cell phones. So thanks. And I think we had another question. Is that okay? We, did I answer your question? Is that okay? Good. Um, yeah. What does the debate do for the election? Like, what is the purpose of that? Sure. The debate, the purpose of it is to engage conversation. I actually personally don't even like the word debate because when you see the Democrat and Republicans, uh, have the Commission on Presidential Debates or the Democrat and Republican here in Colorado for governor, they talk about issues that maybe aren't so connected to the people, right? So the purpose of having an open debate like what we're doing is to engage conversation, excitement, get people thinking, addressing issues like should we remove the curriculum of history, history from our curriculum. Everyone in this room said no and I'm so glad that you did because that's just not constitutional. You know, should again we talk about GMOs. What are what are some topics that interest you? Just real quick. At a debate, what would you like to hear as a question? Did you have did you have one? Sarah? Um, teacher salaries mm -hmm. are really big right now. You guys know that we didn't just go out there for history, right? Yeah. It was also teacher salaries and stuff like that. My mom works for Jefferson County. I've seen her get really close to losing her job quite a few times, so the whole elections with the new school board and everything. 
I want to learn how we could actually do better salaries, um, more work days, or more sick days, because if someone gets sick a lot, or certain jobs, like, I want to know how we can get a better education. And I think we have to start with the teachers, because having amazing teachers. He was my teacher when I was a freshman, and I still hang out in here. What does that say about him as a teacher? He's made an impact in my education. He's made me very interested in history. I want to major in history because I've had three or four amazing teachers that have taught me and have made me very interested in it, which is like the whole thing with education and the changing of the curriculum. I don't want to change history. It's my favorite subject. And I'm very outspoken. So if I don't like something, everyone knows. <laughs> and, to, and that's that's awesome. And to finish on your question is to help accountable candidates get elected for office, right? Because when you have them all on the stage, you're going to be able to tell common sense, you get informed, who's the accountable candidates or not, and then figure out which one's the best. And as far as teachers, I've wholeheartedly learned, again, with all due respect, there's a huge disconnect between the administrators and the teachers. There is. And a lot of the administrators of schools do a lot of negotiation with the people in office, Democrats and Republicans and unions as well, and they create an unsustainable system. So we need to sustain the system for teachers, for pay, for pensions, to make sure that they're secure, that there's going to be money there for them. Because right now, there's been bankruptcy filed in various states of pensions. Like when a teacher retires, they have a pension, and they're you know, planning on living off of that. And right now, that's not secure at all, let alone how teachers are treated as well. So I think that there's a lot of things that could be cleaned up there. But again, it stems from having the right people in office. When we have accountable people in office, then there will be pure negotiations to make sure accountable people that are compassionate with hearts and not controlled by money to make sure great people like your teacher is taken care of. So, yes. Uh, I think she has a question, then we can come to you. Why did they cut, like, all independent? Why, did they, why are they only allowing Democrat and Republican to be in, like, the, the election? Why are they only allowing them and not allowing? I personally think this, what you're doing, sounds amazing. And like a lot of people would definitely agree with this. Like I'm pretty sure a lot of the class does. So why, if most people are agreeing with it, why are they only, only allowing Repu Republican and Democrat? I don't understand that. Because they're perpetuating a fraud on us. They make money. The problem is, is that the two-party system, Democrats and Republicans alike, again, take a lot of money from maybe, there are some good corporations out there, there are a lot of not good corporations, a base them on the individual entities rather than a whole. And when they take money, a lot of people, a lot of Democrats and Republicans that get elected, the moment they get elected, they start campaigning for their next election. They lose the disconnect, they make deals, you know, to put money, you know, in their pockets to win, and then they they start to lose themselves. I think a lot of Democrats and Republicans, meanwhile, I hope, benefit of the doubt. I've always learned, try to always give everyone in the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. And I hope a lot of them mean well when they go in. But when you have somebody like, for example, Dr. Ron Paul, who ran for Republican this last election, um, many feel that the election was stolen from him. I saw that the two-party system would rather crash the party than let somebody else take over. And so they make a lot of money. Gas, electric, all of that, we are living in the dark ages. Once we actually reform the electoral system, I can't wait to learn about innovation. They're building hemp electric cars in Canada. Uh, gas and electric, the powers to be. I don't even think anyone is in control. I think it's chaos at the top. You know, um, really is. We need to take back control of our government and have truly innovation. If you had a loved one that has passed away or has been sick of cancer, illnesses, autism, I feel that there's a remedy for these sort of things, natural. I think that, that we are focusing so much on the cause, sorry, the cure, and we're not focusing on the cause. So a lot of that is due to greed. I feel the pharmaceutical industry, those sort of things, uh, GMOs, I mean, it's just greed, greed, greed. People are needlessly being sick, dying, loved ones. I have loved ones that have died of cancer. You may have already, as you get older, you will find that will become a factor, potentially, of life or knowing somebody who knows someone. And that does not need to happen. My agenda is to help create 
happier, healthier lives, find cures for everyone, innovation. And so I really, that was just a great question, but it comes down to greed. And we need to not have parties and really money and politics, I feel, in the future. I think they're going to fade away. So, Martin, did you have Let something? Let me add a little something to your question. Sure. As simply as I can understand it, being 71 years old, been hmm? around for a long time, might seem that way is something happens to people when they get into power and they want to stay there. It's, they like it. <coughs> and they want to keep the power. And the two parties like having the power. They have it. He's showing you right on Wikipedia, where they don't want other people sharing their, their power. It's kind of like two, it's like two businesses. Each business has 50% of the business. One business owned, is selling to half the people, to the people on that side of the room, the other business is selling to people on this side of the room. Why would they want to share? Actually, the two businesses would actually like to have a hundred, they'd like to have all the, all, the, all, the, all of you as their customers. That's part of human nature. So that's what the two parties have done. They've created a duopoly in the form of a monopoly. And they don't want to give it up. So how do they how are they preventing it from, from, how are they allowing their power, keeping other candidates out of the debates? So that you, your parents, your friends, cannot know other ideas. It's actually happening. Because we showed you right on the, on the screen. And the Women League of Voters got out of, of, of the debates because of this fraud. Great. And uh, I don't have any questions, but I'd love, to, Sarah, for your question and to talk about the curriculum, too. Okay. Really, so. Well, I was going to add, too, um, Please. like, I don't know if you guys know who John D. Rockefeller is. Mm -hmm. uh, Standard Oil, way back in the beginning of the 1900s. Basically, if any other oil company came up, he'd basically lower his prices, and then they'd have to increase theirs. So he'd basically choke out all other People. So he owned basically 99, 99% of all oil. He was one of the richest men in the world. And you have to realize this is like way back then, so like he's like Bill Gates times two. And then the hey, to fill it in, it's actually if you did it to inflation, his money was five times bigger than Bill Gates has now. So he is way richer than Bill Gates. Yeah. Uh, and that's just because, and this, this happened, you, you're going to learn about this in American history. I, we just learned about the progressive age, how uh, the big business guys did this thing called social Darwinism. And I guess you could kind of tie this into the, pol like, the political part. Um, basically, if you didn't succeed, God didn't love you. I know some of you guys might not be religious, but that's what they believed. Um, if you didn't succeed, it's because you weren't supposed to. They didn't really give you a chance to succeed, which is kind of like what's going on. Um, the two big parties are like, we're the only ones that, the higher power, that God, that we were supposed to succeed. No one else is supposed to succeed. The independents aren't supposed to succeed. Do you think they have the rights to succeed? Do you think if I went into political office as an independent, do you think I have the right to attempt to succeed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You guys can answer. You don't have to just be quiet. <laughs> it's fine. See, this is homecoming assembly. Be loud. OK, I'm just going to give you that now. Be loud. You're going to hear us screaming at the seniors. It's going to get loud, but be loud too. Okay? Be proud of yourselves. Stuff like that. You want to have the chance. So I think having the chance is what is really going on because the independents, Green Party, Libertarians, they don't have the chance. And that's not fair. And then with the uh, curriculum. I already said that history is my favorite subject. I'm interested in getting a degree in education of history. I want to be like Mr. De Pasquale, like Mr. Wall, Mr. Harriot, any of the other amazing history teachers that we have around here. We have amazing teachers. You guys know that, right? Like, we have some of the best teachers. Um, my mom used to work at RV. I've been around RV a lot. I was going to go to RV. I signed up for RV when I was in eighth grade, three years ago. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, so I was ready to go there, and then I came here and I walked around. I saw the school, I saw how welcoming Arvada West is. You even said that, you were like, Arvada West is like really beautiful. It's, RV's pretty, but it's confusing. I don't know if any of you guys have walked around RV. Like, no one knows. Um, and that's not just because we're rivals, because I don't like RV, but it's just more confusing. It's a pretty school, it's a newer school. We have the, half of our school is brand new. They've redone a lot of that stuff, like above the gym. I don't know if you guys have seen that. They're redoing all the pictures and everything like that. They're making it even prettier. My incoming class was the 50th class. Yeah, the school's been around for a long time. And yet it still is beautiful. We still have an amazing student. We have like one of the biggest student bodies we've ever had. I don't know how many, is it 1,800? It's 1,750. There's a lot of us. Yeah. And and what's your feeling on the curriculum too? I mean, like, what's like, what's happened? I read, I know, but I want to hear it. What they're Our doing. Our curriculum. Um, you guys are freshmen. Is anyone interested in taking AP World? Raise your hand. I took AP World last year. Okay. Mr. Thayer is one of the best teachers I've had. It's really fun. Anyone in interested in taking AP USA Push? As a junior. AP Euro as a senior. You like history. Even if you don't like history, you want to be advanced. And history is just amazing because you, basically, um, they're taking away the bad parts of history. So that's kind of like saying, uh, the Revolutionary War happened, but it didn't because that was against the government. <coughs> because we rebelled against Britain. So uh, it didn't happen, okay. Uh, civil rights didn't happen. Women voting didn't happen. It's here, it's here, but uh, we don't know how it's here. Which kind of pisses me off because I love learning about all of this kind of stuff. I love learning more than anything in the world. It's one of my favorite things to do. I know the most random stuff. I kid you not, I'm, I could go on like Jeopardy and I, I'd win. I'm that kind of person. You can't take away the, they're censoring AP US history. <coughs> Basically, if you talk to any of the AP US history students, any of the juniors that are taking that class, I'm not in AP US. Um, it's not because it's too hard or anything like that. It's because um, they cover things from 1492 until now. And I'm more interested in the 19th century, um, like World War I, all that fun stuff. Um, but I don't want to have certain parts of my history removed from the books. It's not fair to us because it's kind of like saying, with the whole John D. Rockefeller thing, the strikes, they started doing strikes and stuff, which is fair, it's a right. We have the right to strike. Back then, if you like started a strike, the big corporations could buy police and they would come and kill you, basically. So say, this is back then. I'm going against the school board because he's my boss. I'm striking. You could have someone come and kill me, essentially. That's not this way now, which I'm glad it's not this way now because there's a lot of us that are very passionate about what they're changing. And also, uh, fifth grade um, growing and changing, that's not around anymore. You don't get to learn about that. They're talking about censoring certain things that we're learning, but they're essential, essential, there we go, essential to us as Americans. You have to know the history in order to really know what it means to be an American. To know what it means to be you. And how how do the teachers feel about? I mean, softly, but but um, well, you know, it's just kind I, of I, you can't be really honest, get involved. I keep my opinion out of the classroom. Yeah. So support freedom. If she wants right? to have her opinion. That's awesome. Yeah. If other kids want to have their opinion, I like to bring in that's great of you. third party opinions. And we just got and we're about to run out of time, but we just got learning about. Got done learning about the political spectrum and how we've got the the x-axis political spectrum, the left and the right. But there there are other ways to go, and we added that y-axis, and this really ties in well to understanding, you know, how it's not easy to fit. You know, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.